Blue. Uh, I can't remember where I got to last time. <clears throat> well, the last thing I said was, that was a couple of days ago, had Christmas since. Got some nice uh, Dewalt drills for Christmas. So, uh, got the body, they're all glued together. They're gonna need to be Margaret and Maple glued together, so I might just get stuck in with that. And then I shall get on with the neck. And I did take it through a uh, friend of mine's got a nice big Wadkins planer. Uh, apparently, had a fucking nail in the um, blade. I've just got to chill that out. And then we can glue. That's the side I want the back of a guitar mate, so that's going to be the side I'm gluing. Which side is best? So, you basically slap a load of glue on, try and line up the centre lines, clamp it, leave it overnight. I know it had, uh, the wood did move a bit, I wouldn't get it planed and it did move a bit over Christmas, so I'm just going to clamp it up and make sure she's flat enough. This has clearly got something stuck in the nozzle, so not a lot of glue is coming out. Let's see if it's all that. Oh, better yet, just use the other tub. Plenty of glue on that. Get those center lines lined up.
Right, so we're going to do the um, machine head holes. What I've done is I've marked them out. Just on these dots I've got a scribe and just kind of started a little indent on them. And then basically 10mm brad point. Now these can be absolute buggers. So if you get the holes even slightly wrong, it, the whole thing looks off. So I'd recommend getting one of these. So it says dead still. So when you stick it in that, you're going to get nicely lined up holes. Let's go. Right, that's done. Now, what I probably should have told you I'm doing before is this headstock needs to be about 15 mil that way. So I've drilled from the back, so when you get blowout, it doesn't matter because you're cutting it off anyway. If you're doing an angled headstock or something, you know, we're not doing the fender one where it's thinned and turned. Thinned and turned? Well, thickness to about 15 mil, and then there's a little kind of dip there to get in the truss rod. If you're doing an angled headstock, you want to get a bit of wood under it to try and minimise blowout, but that looks about straight to me. Okay, now what I'm going to do, use a spindle sander. We're basically going to take, put the curvature in. We don't want to go past the nut line, we don't want to go past the thickness line. Let's go.
Right, you can see you've got that curve in, didn't go past the line. That's how you get your truss rod access. Now just flatten the rest of it to that line. Bob's your uncle. Right, <clears throat> I've got, just realised I forgot to clip my microphone in, but fuck it. So now we've got that, that's all nice and flat, holes are in there, we need access to the truss rod, which ultimately is a really long, I think about 7 mil bit, and drill it, and that's about it. Nice, works. Make sure it's straight. Okay, that's a head start. At least started got access to the truss rod all works fine now we've got to do the side darts so all the side darts are is measure i.e. one two three if that's your third fret and you want one of these um what have i done with it one of these rulers and have a zero in the middle and work your way out so you can go up into your I can't see it on camera which one's a third that one Line the zero up in your third, fifth, seventh, ninth, twelfth frets, etc., etc. Then you poke it with that, just a little dab, so it's like um, kind of like a pilot hole for the drill. You then stick a bit of super glue down somewhere, literally like a tiny little plastic rod, and you roll it in super glue, poke it in the hole, and then kind of get razor blade and nip the end off, which I'll do now. Right, all marked out now. Two mil drill bit, get stuck in. You don't need to go that deep. Right, now 
that comes to put the actual rod in. So what you need is some super glue and the old scrap bit of uh, turning paper to put some super glue on. You want these, if you notice they're flush at the end. And then And repeat. That's that. Then let's wipe off the excess super glue. Now they are going to be raised a little bit. Let's simply get yourself a sanding block so you know it's going to be flat, which I have no idea where mine are. Oh, there it is. scissors inside. Boom, you've got side dots. Right, neck carving. Uh, there's many ways to do this. <clears throat> you can stick it on a spindle sander, you can, you know, get the um, like radius gauge and whatnot. How I tend to do it is with a Japanese Shinto saw rasp. Bit of tongue roll. Which is this. So you've got one side which is really coarse, one that's really thin. I don't know if you can see here, so I've got from the headstock kind of a volume in, which goes to the nut, so you don't go beyond that line. And here, this other end, I've got a line where I'll be gluing another piece of maple on. To, um, I need a bit of height where the heel joins the body. So what I'm going to do is around about this much, you kind of saw away until you, you know, that's the shape you want doing basic chords. Down here, well, it's pretty obvious, do what you want around about the 12th fret, and then you join it in the middle. So I'm just going to get stuck in and I'll probably speed this process up.
Right, that's a quick time lapse. I still need to do a bit more on it. I'm sweating as well. So it's beginning to look like an egg now. And the more you sand it, well, after you've rasped it, you'll see the flames start coming through now. So not done. I'm going to keep going until I fit my hand, but there's no point in me filming it. So it's getting there. So I'm going to crack on and then we'll pick up in a bit. 